Good morning everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here then hello my name is Sam and I post lots of Disney lifestyle travel and theatre content. If you like that kind of thing then make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. But today we are here at SeaWorld Orlando which I honestly love SeaWorld. It's such a great park. A whole year ago I was here last and it's just such a great park to go to. It's very very different to Disney. It's about a 25 minute drive from the Disney complex so we went and we got an Uber to SeaWorld and it cost $35 so it's going to be $35 each way because um, that's kind of the price you're looking at if you haven't got a car. But yeah, I'm really, really excited for a great day at SeaWorld. I know they've got a new roller coaster that's open, um, which is going to be really good. So we're going to go and head there as well. But yeah, we're here for a great day at SeaWorld. So come and join me. Let's go. So you're only bringing in one bag today because for all of the SeaWorld rides, you're not allowed to take any of your bags on with you. So you have to leave, go and leave them in a locker. I'll let you know how much the lockers are. We're thinking of getting the all day locker, but you can get like locker for just one time and that kind of thing but you have to pay for all of them so we only just bring one small bag because the lockers aren't really that big either um, and we kind of made that mistake last time so we do that but today's sea world is open it opens at 10 a.m and then it closes tonight at 8 p.m so there's quite a few hours we probably won't stay the whole day um but it'll be really really a great day so we're just going to go through security and then we're here famous sea world lighthouse always a great sign and I believe that this coaster here, that's just above the entrance, is the new Pipeline Surf Coaster, which I'm so excited to go on in. You have to stand up to it, so it's going to be the first stand-up coaster I've ever done. Okay, we're in, and SeaWorld honestly has some of the best coasters in the world, like whether it's Mako or Kraken. Like, honestly, there are so many great coasters here, and I feel like every year, pretty much every year, they end up getting a new coaster, and I'm so excited to do the new one. Um, but I just love walking around this park. Like, it's such a different vibe to Disney. It's so different, and it is really, really nice. Um, sometimes here, the like operations can be really slow, but the queues are never really too long. Like, in comparison to Disney and Universal, the queues aren't ever really too bad. So, let's go and do our first coast. And for those of you who are from the UK and maybe you've been to Alton Towers, this ride here, Manta, is literally um, the same kind of ride as Galactica at Alton Towers. Um, it's a flying coaster and it is just incredible. I'll show you when it comes down in a minute. But yeah, this is seriously such an intense coaster. Like in comparison to Galacta, it is so intense, um, which I think you find with a lot of SeaWorld rides. They are just intense rides, but I think it's what makes them the best. Manta. I'm not going to do any kind of like on-ride filming today. Um, I'm not too sure what um, SeaWorld's quality is. I think because I've got my phone, I wouldn't be allowed to. Um, whereas if you've got like a handheld like GoPro or something, you are able to. But I'll do lots of like off-ride footage and I'll give you my full reaction to the rides afterwards. But we're going to go and head into the locker place first, um, just to go and get our locker for the ride. Right, so this is how the lockers work. So you can get a single-use locker, um, which is $3, but obviously you only can do that once per ride. I think it lasts two hours, or what we've done is got the multi-use locker, which is uh, $10 to use that. Although we noticed that the cash wouldn't work, so we had to go and use a card instead. So just for context, this is how big the lockers are. So we can fit like a medium-sized bag in there, but it's not too big, so I wouldn't bring anything bigger than that. Manta was honestly so fun. I think it is my favourite flying coaster I've ever done. I honestly love it and it is just so intense. That pretzel loop is just like, I can't describe the intensity. I mean, that's the most intense I've ever felt on a roller coaster. I honestly love it. Um, and we only waited about 10 minutes for it, which is great. It was on two trains. We just went and downloaded the SeaWorld Orlando app just to see what time like the animal shows are. And they're not doing many animal shows now. Like it used to be quite regular. Whereas now like each show, they only have like maybe two showing times. Like for example, the Orca show is just on at 12.30 and half six, which is just a bit annoying really. Like, especially if like, if there was a storm or something like that, like you've got to wait a long time for it. So we're trying to plan our day around the shows because I feel like every time we come to SeaWorld, we prioritise the rides. I mean, we never really see any of the animal shows. I feel like it's the one park that you should go and see the animal shows where you can. Um, obviously, again, like I said before, there's mixed reviews on what people think about how SeaWorld looks after the animals and that kind of thing. Um, but from what I've seen before when I've been here, like SeaWorld do really, really love the animals. Like the trainers work so hard. Um, but I guess it is down to personal opinion, really. Uh, but the 
if you're coming here, like the coasters are just insane. Like it was honestly amazing. Like one of the best rides I've ever ever been on. Um, so yeah, I think we're just gonna kind of wander around, maybe get on another ride, and then we're gonna go and head over to see one of the sh animal shows. Ready for a water ride, Joel? Yes. Bring it on. We need a water ride. We're gonna go to Journey to Atlantis. Yeah, this here is Journey to Atlantis. I honestly love this ride. You do get quite wet. It's very very needed. We, uh, I was talking to the Uber driver on the way here, and he said that literally Florida are not expected a storm for a very very long time because it's something to do with by the Caribbean or something like weather pressures or something like that. I don't really understand it too much myself, but. Um, so yeah, we're not going to have a storm for a while apparently, but this is a journey to Atlantis. I've already noticed that one main difference between SeaWorld and Disney is the lack of air conditioning. Like, it, you can really feel it. Like, in a lot of their queues they just have fans, but there's no air conditioning and it is just hot constantly. Like, constantly just heat. Um, the fans are pretty good though. Yeah, these are the fans. They actually like do their job, but um, yeah. I'm feeling the heat today a lot, like a lot. Oh, it is wet. wet. Oh! <laughs> I think it's a little drop just after the big drop, and that is lethal, lethal, and drenched. That ride is such a soaker. We was front row, and we got absolutely drenched. My mum was pretty wet, to be fair, as well. Um, but yeah, and you know what? It's the drops that you don't expect to get you wet. Like that big drop there doesn't really do much, but the moment you go down the little tiny drops, it's like you get drenched, actually drenched, more like poured into the boat. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely fun. I really, really love it. And the indoor drop is just insane on there. Like, it's so good. So we're just making our way over to the Orca Encounter. It's just over there in that stadium, just there. But I always forget just how far it is to get to the Orca Stadium. So just to bear that in mind, um, I'd definitely give yourself plenty of time. And the fact they only do two showings of this a day um, means that it's going to be packed. Like, it's going to be packed. Lots of people love going to the Orca Encounter. So just leave plenty of time to make your way over there. Like, from where we are right now, it's about a 10-minute walk to go, like, around the lake. So just be aware of that. I mean, it's very, very, very... It's a very far distance, but... It'll be worth it, I'm sure. And I would love to go to this event one day. It's such a shame that I'm a teacher and I never get to come here really in October. Um, but one day I'd love to go to Halloween, uh, Hallow Scream, I say Halloween Horror Nights, Hallow Scream. I'd love to do that. So here's the Orca Encounter. So it's 12 o'clock and 7.30. I don't like the two times that they're doing it, to be honest. I feel like they're really annoying the way they do it. You can purchase reserved seats for it. However, when we've done this in the past and if we just found it wasn't really worth doing um, because you can get a seat if you just are there earlier. So. And I noticed that even with the reserved seats, you still have to arrive really early because there's a lot of people that go and buy that ticket thinking, oh, we get to go back and get like priority seating, which you do, but I wouldn't say the seats are any better necessarily. So just, yeah, I'd say to be aware of that. Um, I also find that it's not really ever worth getting the quick queue here. Um, again, we've done that in the past, but the queues here are all like five, ten minutes. So, and I don't think SeaWorld ever really gets that busy. So maybe unless you're going on a weekend, I wouldn't necessarily go and get quick queue for here either. I just don't think it's needed. We're gonna go down We're in the soak zone, which has to be done if you're doing this show. I love the soak zone, it's great. Um, well, if you don't wanna get soaked, you can go up there and there's a dry safe zone. But look at that. Yorka is right in front of us. Look at him looking through. He's so cute. Flavors and I love the rainbow ice one, it's so good. But if you haven't had dipping dots, you need to go and get them. Just 
perfectly different flavours that they do. I love the rainbow ice, it's my favourite. I think I've had the cookies and cream before as well, which is also really good. But they do these in all the different Sea World parts. If you go to Bush Gardens, they also do them there. But they are so good, I love them. It's so refreshing. It's so nice on a hot day. I just can't believe how expensive they were. I'm sure they never used to be that expensive, but we're going to enjoy them. Mm. There's a lot of rise in Seaworth which are closing early, so Infinity of course is showing at half seven, which is half an hour before the park shuts. But like, there's lots of areas where they signs are saying like rise starting at six and that kind of thing. Uh, next up, let's get drenched on Infinity Quite a long queue, 45 minutes. It's probably the longest queue that's at SeaWorld at the moment, but we thought we might as well get this one done now. So when we are at Disney, we normally all have our own bags, so we like just go around all day with our own bags. But whilst we're here at SeaWorld and we only have the one bag, we are literally on a very, very like strict rota on who has the bag. So we're literally saying on the hour we're changing the bag. It's only fair to do that. Um, but yeah, we've all had the bag, one turn each. Now it's back to Sean, but Sean doesn't want the bag again. He's having a stop over it. But it's only fair. Yeah, it's only fair. I think it's so drenched on here. Like, this is what I call a real rapid. This is what a proper rapid should be like. Can even rapid if you learn a thing or two from this one. I honestly love this, it is just amazing. I genuinely do not think there is an inch of my body that is dry. Like, I am fully wet, I am soaked. My shoes are full of water. But it was worth it, that it by far is the best rapids in Orlando. I honestly, it is incredible. If you want a drencher, that is the one to go on. It's the final splash zone, so you can get wet here. You're honestly, all your feet get wet. getting that wet last time um, honestly it's so but that is what a rapid should be like that is what a true rapid should be like it's so good we don't get rapids like that in the uk at all although we don't really get the weather for it and i would not appreciate getting that wet on like congo River rapids at all towers but um the funny thing is though is it's literally been two minutes we're walking now towards mako and i'm pretty much dry like i'm like that is how hot the sun is like it just dries off so quickly so don't worry too much you can also get a locker for that one we didn't even realize there was lockers there um so our bags were completely drenched so maybe the person in front of us they had like a like shopping carrier bag that they put their bag in it might be worth doing if you don't want to pay out for that one we are heading on to mako mako is by far my favorite coaster here at sea world it's such a good coast that it's so intense and i always like sitting on the back row here because you get some great air time at the back um but it's such a great ride my number one coaster in Orlando until I went on to Velocicoaster at Universal Orlando, which I'm not doing on this trip unfortunately, but I absolutely love this coaster here. And Iron Guazi is now I think my number one. And so because Iron Guazi, then Velocicoaster and then Mako. So it's a great coaster here. at Universal Orlando. Obviously I haven't tried the newest one but I don't think it's going to be that uh, by, at, at all. I'm actually fully dried off now from Infinity Falls. Like the force on there, I do love a B&M Hyper Coaster which obviously that model is. Um, I love a B&M Hyper Coaster um, and I would love for us to get one at the UK. Like, I feel like that would make the Fort Park skyline just so amazing but I don't think we're going to be getting it anytime soon unfortunately but make what we have to do for now. It's such a great ride I honestly it's insane, it's insane. And the amount you lift up from your seat when you're going down the drops. Yeah, a, a true thrill coaster that one. The good thing about it is we actually only waited like five minutes for it. There was literally no line whatsoever. So we could literally take re it. I think there were so many seats empty. Um, but they're running really, really well today at SeatWorld. Like I've been here before and everything has just been really, really slow. Um, but the ride teams are working really hard today, so. Thumbs up to them. So we've just gone and booked our Uber for 6 p.m. So we're gonna go and leave the park at six. Um, but before that, we're gonna go and just do the dolphin show because I'd like to go and see that. We're gonna go to Stingray Lagoon. And we just went onto My Disney Experience and we've booked a park pass reservation for Magic Kingdom this evening. So we can actually finally go and see Happy Ever After, which, you know, if you know, you know. I've been so excited about seeing Happy Ever After. I really can't wait to see it again. But we're just now at the Stingray Lagoon, I think it's called. Stingray. I honestly love Stingrays, but I just think they're the cutest. Look at that. You look so happy. Oh, <laughs> Let's name some zones. Mr. Red. 
what it makes you think of. We're just walking uphill now to the Dolphin Theatre and we're going to see the Dolphin Adventure show that they do. And I've never seen this before, it's been my first time seeing it, but I love dolphins. They're one of my favourite like, marine animals. I love seeing them also at Discovery Cove where you can swim with them. But yeah, we're here at the theatre about 25 minutes early and it's a huge theatre actually. See, this is what the seating's like for the show. We're going to head down towards the bottom. Yeah, not too many people here either at the minute. Daisy, she needs to get a few friends and do like synchronised jumping in the garden. Yeah, that would be good. It was just so cute, I love watching that. Quite like now, but... in for when Daisy can have a little tricks in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got about two and a half hours until our taxi, so what I want to do is I definitely need to go onto the new roller coaster at some point, but we also need to do Kraken still, so, and then in like two complete opposite ends of the park, so I think we're going to go to do Kraken first, get that out of the way, and then we're going to go over to Pipeline, which is the brand new roller coaster here. Right, the rain has just started, it's only spitting lightly, but we thought we'd change the plan and come to mine first because that's more of a priority for us because we've never done this before, so it'd be good to go onto it. But it looks absolutely incredible. I've heard such great things about this ride, like honestly, it's a standing up roller coaster, which I've never done anything like it before. But it doesn't seem to be going around very regular. Um, I say it seems to be going around like once every like five, six minutes, so I um, don't really know why it's taking so long to go around, whether it's only on one train or I don't know, but I'm hoping it's not close because of the storm. Fingers crossed it isn't. The layout of the ride seems really long as well, a lot longer than I expected, so we're just going to go and put out bags in a locker, it's only a five minute wait and I'll give you my full review when I arrive, but pipeline, let's go. Right, we're just about to head into the Dolphin Adventure Show, we're just going to go around multiple times, but I feel like once is enough. Um, it's a really, really fun attraction. It's a great addition to SeaWorld and it's very, very different to anything else. But like, I've never done a stand up poster before. It was a very, very different, weird motion. Um, I think where I'm taller, I didn't have much movement in my seat, so I didn't really bounce around a lot. And it was just extremely uncomfortable, like uncomfortable in every place possible. That's all I'm going to say, but like, very, very uncomfortable. The heavens have finally opened. So I know I'm saying there's going to be no storm today. Here it is. It has arrived. Seek and shelter. Seek and shelter. So yeah, overall, I think it was a good ride. Um, not my favourite ride at SeaWorld by far, like at all. Um, better than Icebreaker, I must admit. We haven't done that today. I'm not surprised about doing that. But I would do it again. Um, it just was very uncomfortable, that's what I'm going to say. Jack, what do you think? Very uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable. It was, yeah. I think it's just the restraints and the type of oh, it's very dark. I think it's the restraints and the type of seat and yeah, maybe it's just like a stand up poster kind of thing. Um, I have to try other ones to see if it's the same. But the seat was also very, very quiet. But if you ask one of the workers, they'll like adjust the seat for you. Um, so like, my mum had to get them to like, push the seat down for her to get onto it because um, it was very, very tall. Even for me, I had to like, really push myself up. Um, but yeah, overall, I'd give it like a six out of ten. I would give it a seven. Seven, yeah, six, seven out of ten. Um, nothing special. Whilst it's stormy, we've just headed into the Christmas shop at SeaWorld. Um, they do all these really, really lovely ornaments. A lot of them are just like normal. There's nothing SeaWorld really about them. Um, but yeah, I love a Christmas shop. I love that at uh, like the Disney parks and obviously here, they've got a like, Christmas shop. I love getting a Christmas ornament wherever I go. It's a shame because the main ball ball is only for pass members only. So if you've got an annual pass to SeaWorld, you get it. Uh, that is really, really nice. Of a lot of the other ornaments are like obviously SeaWorld. Marine life, so like you've got your seals, little turtle, 
an all car. They are really cute actually. I love this one of the all car. It says SeaWorld on it. Holding, well it's a little bell. That's really cute. Uh, 14 dollars right, We're going to go and head on to our final ride of our time here at SeaWorld, which is Kraken. Kraken is a great coast there. I actually had a repaint quite recently. Not, not last year, the year before I think it was. But let's go and head on to Kraken. just how much of a headbanger Kraken is. It is so like rough in some places and it's obviously one of SeaWorld's older rides but um, yeah it's definitely a headbanger. Yeah overall we've had a really good day over at SeaWorld. I've really enjoyed it. We're gonna make our way now to be able to get out of Uber. Um, but should we really enjoy SeaWorld? Yeah it's very good. Yeah what's your favourite ride? Uh, the new one. Pipe ride? Yeah. Pipe line. I think my favourite roller coaster here is still Mako. Um, I love Mako so much. No, I also like Manta a lot also. But, yeah, that one yeah, Manta too. Um, but yeah, definitely. I think you could easily spend two days here in SeaWorld. Like, we spent a whole day here today, pretty much. And I still feel like there's more to see and do. Um, you definitely need to be organised with it. And I've seen quite a lot of families go up to the shows today and then they just like, be disappointed when they've got there and realised that their show times are quite rare here. So just keep an eye on the app, definitely download it before you come. But yeah, overall we've had a really, really nice day. And we'll see you back in the Disney bubble. And just like that, we've made it to the Magic Kingdom. It's very busy actually, but a lot of people seem to be walking out. We got all fully changed uh, because I still felt a bit gross from being at SeaWorld. So we had a shower and we got changed. I'm fully kitted out in Zara this evening. So I've got my white Zara t-shirt on with white shorts. And then I'm also wearing my um, shirt that I got from Zara, which I really, really love this shirt. But we're here at the Magic Kingdom because what we're going to actually do is go and watch Happy Ever After, um, which I cannot wait to see Happy Ever After. But before we do that, we're actually going to go and grab something to eat. So we're going to have a little look around and see what we want to have. It's so nice to be here. Seeing this just never gets old. Like, it's just the most magical place to be. The park actually feels so much busier today than it did on Friday when we was here for Mickey's Not So Scary. It just feels a lot busier. Like, even Pirates right now is 50 minute wait. Um, so yeah, it's very, very busy. Today's actually a uh, extended evening hours for those guests staying at Deluxe Resort. So annoying that they only do it for those staying at Deluxe Resort. Um, so obviously we don't get that this time. Yeah, that's also, I think, why it feels a little bit busy here in Magic Kingdom today, um, just because of the extended evening hours. It used to be the same back in like, 2018 when everybody used to get extended hours and Magic Kingdom would just be like unbearable because there'd be so many people like all wanting to do the extended hours. But we're in Frontierland. I think we're gonna go and get food first because I am honestly starving. I'm so hungry. I've literally had nothing to eat today um, because at SeaWorld we didn't really get anything. We just got, um, I got a drink and then uh, my brother's got a pretzel and I tried some of that, but I just wasn't really craving anything at SeaWorld and I thought I'd save myself for being here at Magic Kingdom. So I think we're gonna go and get a pack of bills. Welcome to Magic Kingdom's number one quick service restaurant. Pecos Fields, we've just done a mobile order. I honestly love the food in here. It has never failed to be amazing. But honestly, it's incredible. Guys, you definitely need to make sure you are mobile ordering because that is the cue, just to go and get your food. Whereas mobile order is literally straight away, like you just get your food immediately. So just mobile order, just have it on your app and do it whenever you can because it honestly saves so much time. It's actually such a big like dining area in here. So this is what I go for every time I come to Pecos Bill. So it's the fajita platter. So you get, I think, three tortilla wraps. You get a choice. I've went for the pork and the chicken, but you can get like double chicken or double pork if you wanted to. It comes with like some veggie stuff. You get rice, beans, and then it also comes with some uh, a sour cream and also a uh, salsa. So that is what my order is when I'm here at Pecos Bill's. But all the food looks really good here. Like I see people with the tacos which look amazing. The nachos look so good. I think Jack's had a burger before, which was apparently amazing. So this place, honestly, I think is the best quick service in Magic Kingdom. For this and with the drink, it comes to $21 per person, which I think is a really good value meal, really, for how much food you're actually getting. To make my first wrap, I'm gonna have some pork. And I'm gonna add some chicken as well. A bit of both, best of both worlds. Add some rice, beans, and add some of this as well. Some sour cream, and some salsa. 
I mean, I probably overfilled this wrap, but that looks so good. Let's give it a try. Here we go. It is such a tasty meal. Just love it. And actually, it was a little bit spicier than it normally is. Disney are being more like creative now and definitely adding a bit more spice to their food, which they used to shy away from, but now they're starting to do it. And it, honestly, I love Mexican food so much, but that was like the best, the best. Honestly, love it. But probably my second favorite meal that I've had here, I'd say it would be Polite Pig and then Pecos Bills. That would be my order. So good. Um, we're now gonna make our way over to Main Street and get our space before the fireworks. It's about an hour till it begins. Um, but I'm not liking the crowds in Magic Kingdom tonight. It is very busy though, extremely busy. But there's just so many people and I don't know, I just don't like it when it's like this really. Right, so this is the crowds for the fireworks. Um, Happy here after showing at nine o'clock tonight and this is eight o'clock right now. So, yep. <laughs> Gonna try and find our space, but I think it's this crowded. I mean, it's always crowded for the fireworks anyway, but um, I think it's a bit earlier than normal because it is extra magic hours this evening. But it's the view that we've got this evening for Happy Ever After. I normally like to try and get one of them spots just over there by the fence, but um, we was too late to get there today. And it seems just a lot busier. People seem to be getting their spot a lot earlier today. Like even about, like when we was walking in earlier on, about what was that, an hour ago? People were already waiting for the fireworks then, which is just, Crazy, it's absolutely crazy, but um, get yeah, this selfie for this evening. Honestly, so excited to be seeing Happy Ever After again. Yeah, Happy Ever After was my first fireworks show that I saw at Walt Disney World, and it just has the most special place in my heart. I honestly love Happy Ever After. So to see it again would be great. I did really enjoy um, Enchantment when that was here. Um, yeah, it was a really good fireworks. Also, at first I didn't really like it, but I grew to love it the more I saw it. Um, and I love the soundtrack to that, but it's going to be so great to see this fireworks again. I just, it's going to be amazing. Hopefully, Tink flies tonight. The weather's been pretty good, although there's a few grey clouds, so I'm hoping it doesn't get cancelled. The main difference is now with this show of Happy Ever After is they now have projections down at Main Street, whereas in the original they didn't do that. Um, so we need to spend one evening actually going further back in Main Street and actually going and see the projections whilst the fireworks are going on because they're meant to be great. We saw the projections down there when it was Enchantment, um, but honestly, seeing it with this show is just going to be something so special. So um, I think we're going to be planning on seeing it Happy Ever After three times whilst we're here. So there's plenty of opportunity to see it from different views, but I'm quite happy with today's view. Kingdom invites you to enjoy a spectacular Happy Ever After, presented by Pandora Toy. Our journey. They've started the pre-show music. Honestly, can't wait. I can't wait. I've waited for so long to see this again. The my last time seeing Harry Potter was 2018, all them years back. I actually think Disney parks at night are just next level. Like I'm such a Disney parks by night kind of guy. I just love it. And seeing the nighttime spectacles, it's just a must for me. Like I have to see it every night whilst I'm here. It's just so magical.
my favourite part of it. I love it. I've never noticed all the pixie dust in the trees before. It's so cute. I just can't even speak. Like, that is the most perfect fireworks show that there is. Like, it's perfect. I don't know, it just makes me realise just how much I love Disney. I think it has a bit of everything in it, and it is just the best. It leaves me speechless every single time I see it, and I, it was just everything I could have ever wanted to see. Like, I, I love it so much. It's by far the best Disney fireworks there is. We're gonna make our way outside of Magic Kingdom now, and as you know, this is always the worst bit, trying to get out after the fireworks. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head back to the hotel and get ready for tomorrow. But yeah, I'll talk to you when I'm there, but it is chaos right now. Yeah, just make sure you have literally all your family together, hold on to each other's back or whatever, because it is just chaos. It's chaos trying to get out, but it's all worth it. Seeing that show, it is so worth it.
we're almost at the buses. It's taken a while, but we are getting there. It is just very stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. But we're almost there. Okay, so I'm gonna round up the vlog here. We had the most amazing day at SeaWorld. It was great to get on everything over there. And then heading to Magic Kingdom this evening was great. Magic Kingdom at night is just like the best place to be. And seeing Happy Ever After was great. I'm so glad that that isn't the last time we're gonna be seeing it on this trip. I'm gonna be seeing it two more times, I think we're gonna be seeing it. So that will be great. But um, that's the end of this vlog, but don't worry because there'll be another vlog tomorrow. I am off to Magic Kingdom again um, because we've kind of changed our itinerary around. We wanted to get on Tron again, so we're gonna go and do that. Um, so that'll be really, really good because we're, we're gonna like split our day. So we're gonna park hop tomorrow. So I'll show you how you can park hop uh, because we're gonna be going to Epcot after that um, and doing some more of the food and wine festival and that kind of thing and seeing a bit more of the entertainment actually over in Epcot. Um, but that is the plan for tomorrow, so I will see you then. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you real soon. Bye guys.